I've seen the requests. Saw some on Discord. Saw some in our comment section. And you know what? I just decided to hell with it. Let's watch some Nick Crowley. Or Crowley. I'm not sure how he pronounces his name because I've never watched any of his videos before. It's probably Crowley because it's probably like Aleister Crowley. Maybe. But if he goes Crowley, I wouldn't be surprised because that some people have weird ways of pronouncing names. It's just like, uh, uh, what was the one? It was a... Uh, it depends on if his it's his actual last name or if he's named after, you know, Aleister Crowley. Like, yeah, if he's going for Aleister um, Crowley, horror related Crowleys, you know. Well, Aleister Crowley was a creepy motherfucker, no doubt about that. Uh, but Nick Crowley uh, has a series of videos here. Um, Internet Mr. mysteries. Crowley. Oh gosh, the Ozzy Osbourne song. Mm. So. The, C- the Seattle Zombie Woman, an internet mystery. So, there's a lot of internet mysteries out there. Some of them, some of them in the more public sphere. Some of them more, a little more obscure. And then there are the ones that are just completely just off the beaten trail, off the mainstream internet. And those, uh, you know, those are, that linger on the dark web, which I've read into some of the ones that are on the dark web and... I don't think I want to know about those. There's some that are there's some that are very intriguing, but the deeper you go, the more disturbing it gets. The most mainstream mystery that kind of fascinates me that I don't think I'll ever not think about when we're talking about like unsolved cases is the woman that was acting strange on the hotel elevator footage that then disappeared. Yeah, that one's weird. And I can't remember if she was the one that was found drowned in the water tank on the roof, but I believe she was. Mm -hmm. Or at least her body was found in the water tank. I don't know if they actually know if she drowned in it or if her body just ended up there. There was one we saw on Mr. Ballin. Uh, This dude was at a hospital, and he refused to leave. Like, he got a checkup and everything, but then, like, they were telling him, like, okay, you're discharged, you have to leave. And he's like... And, and he's like, okay. That, yeah, that and then he stays out in the lobby. Like, he's it's he's looking around as if someone's looking for yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Like following he, him. He, he knew somebody was going <clears> to get him at that point. And they still can't figure out what happened because they've never been able to decipher the letter that he had. Mm-hmm. And they've never... And they don't know who was after him. Because the trail goes cold the very moment that they lose sight of him on, like, the last camera that was at a gas station just outside of town. After that, they don't know what the hell happened to him. I still meant to go look at that letter and stuff at some point. Because I'm like, obviously, if the FBI can't figure it out, there's a slim-ass chance of me figuring anything out. But you never know. Maybe it... Maybe it's, like, one of those things where if you have a trained mind already, you're going to be overthinking things. And Maybe. Like an amateur mind might be the key to actually solving it. Fresh perspective. You never know. Yeah. But Nick Crowley has a series of videos here. This one is The Seattle Zombie Woman, an internet mystery. Let's check it out and let's see what it has to offer. You ready? Mm-hmm. Are you ready? I've never heard of a zombie in Seattle, but I'm interested. Need to tell Jesse about this one. Tell him to watch out. <laughs> Returning to the state of Washington is always a new adventure for me. I want to share with you the sights and sounds of this beautiful northwest corner of our nation. Uh, this is recent. May 5th. 2021, a disturbance is reported alongside a popular roadway in Seattle, Washington, drawing heavy police presence to the area. According to witnesses on the scene, a this woman has been the spotted same, limping down the street. Uh, cadence of speaking as Chills does, kind of. Mm-hmm. Like where he almost sounds like he's in, in, not ending any of his sentences with a period, but like with a light question mark. Yeah. <laughs> Also, uh, I'll say this: his vo- like the voice is definitely more soothing than Chills, because Chills, the more you listen to him, the more you're just like, dude, just stop, just just stop. Well, I used to have no problem with him, and then the more I thought about it, the more I was just like, I'm having trouble taking him seriously now. Yeah, I don't like that, but Burger King Footlet has kind of made a lasting impression in a lot of people's minds. <laughs> 
Jesus Christ. Street, wailing in agony while holding an unknown object in her hand. The woman was acting incredibly erratic and appeared to be seriously injured, though despite this, it had apparently taken as many as eight police officers to subdue and restrain her. And this was far from the most Damn. chilling detail, oh, with that being in the woman's appearance, as onlookers would go on to claim that there was something off about her face. It was unnatural, almost zombie-like. The story began as whispers among the community, with brief mentions being made across the web, though not many would take these posts seriously. As to outsiders, this seemed to be yet another internet hoax, or perhaps just some kind of extreme overreaction. But in reality, this was a very real scene that played out that evening, and one that was about to be put on display for the whole world to see, as the first video would quickly emerge, thrusting this case into an international spotlight, and giving birth to an internet mystery known today as the Seattle Zombie Woman. Before we dive into this, I just wanted to let you guys know that I have a brand new second channel called Crowley TV. And over there, I'm going to be exploring some mysteries and conspiracy theories in person. Overall, the channel is going to be a lot more fun and way less morbid than this channel over here, <laughs> while also still exploring some of those dark and creepy themes. So if you guys are interested in checking that out, I will leave a link in the description so below. And make sure you turn those post notifications as on. As as speaking voice no, no, like, that's how some people present, like, for instance, it's probably Ray, the same thing with Chills. If you talk to Chills in person, he probably sounds normal. <clears throat> yeah, Ray William Johnson's the same way. Ray William Johnson's voice is a lot more normal. He just amps it up for whenever he's making videos. It has like a certain video energy. Yeah. To it. I'm sure Jacksepticeye is not quite as like over the top in person. Well, no, everyone talks that Sean's actually a very quiet person. Yeah. But when he becomes Jack, that's when the energy goes just through the roof. And you can kind of see Mark's, like, uh, in-person, like, persona in a lot of his non-gameplay videos as well, you know? So, you know, he's more chill. Yeah, than true. He is when he's playing a game. Very Especially true. Especially when you, if you were watching Unis on us, like, you could tell when you saw Reed Ethan, he's like, you serious right now? <laughs> you know, Seriously, bro? Like that. <laughs> Are you serious? He's like, I'm not going to make it to the end of this challenge with you either. I'm going to kill you, I swear. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, just like, I don't know if he actually ever said that, but I got that vibe from him sometimes. Unis I think, in some ways broke Mark. I think Ethan, in some ways, broke Mark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think Mark yeah. learned it about halfway through the year agreeing to do that every day with Ethan because he's just like, I'm going to kill this kid. <laughs> I, I am going to viciously murder somebody. <laughs> Odds are... What, it's like, it's like, it's like, well, I could possibly die during this challenge. Ethan definitely will. <laughs> Especially if I get my hands on him. Alerted to my first upload. Thank you guys as always for your support and I will see you over there. I'm seriously spooky. I like his editing style so far, by the way. Yeah. What the fuck? Damn. The video immediately took the world by storm, as it showed a woman with a ghostly pale face, with half her head shaven, as she limps across the street wearing only one shoe. Bath and salts, each dude. step she takes, she seems to yell in pain, before the video quickly cuts. In her hand appears to be the mysterious object, which the uploader of the video claimed to be a fanny pack, and disturbingly, it appeared to be soaked in blood, along with many other parts of the woman's body. In terms of context, there wasn't much, as despite the video going viral across the site, information on this individual dubbed the Seattle Zombie Woman was practically non-existent. According to the uploader, police had arrived and intervened just after the recording had stopped, in that it had taken a full team of officers to ultimately restrain her. You know what? Other thought that's like not like drug related and such is she almost looks like she's walking out in the last scene of a horror film from escaping from somebody who was like horribly torturing her. Yeah, I could see that too. <clears throat> and like could understandably <clears throat> say why it took eight police officers to restrain her 
Yes. Because if she's been in captivity for the past God knows how long. She's not going to want to. Yeah. Yeah. She could be out of her mind with like fear and stuff, you know. Definitely. Way likely to get some form of treatment, though they admit that they weren't sure what happened from there. Or, just as importantly, what had led to this moment. Though interestingly enough, despite the fact that the answers were not emerging, other recordings certainly were. On the same day this now infamous TikTok was posted, another clip would be posted to YouTube by a separate user, seemingly showing a different angle of the same event, with this version being significantly longer. Here, we get a better angle of the woman's face, it as it appears completely spooky. abnormal, with her yeah. eyes and lips appearing to be pitch black, which is a dramatic contrast to her pale complexion. All in all, she looks sickly, and appears to be acting completely unhinged. Near her, multiple cops are seen attempting to calm her down, though she just continues walking and screaming, even escaping their grasp at the end of the video, while continuing her erratic behavior. From there, it's assumed that the struggle continued before finally coming to an end some time later, which was showcased in yet another video posted to TikTok. So given the fact clip, that the cops in the video are being more gentle with her, and like I think it's eight cops probably to get her to chill enough to come with them, but they're not like tackling her or anything. I don't think no, no. I don't think she's under arrest. I think they're trying to help her. Um... And well, they really gotta know kinda, something's wrong. I think it really lends, like, I keep thinking about my explanation for, like, you know, the what if she escaped from something horrible type deal, and I'm just like, it's starting to really spook me out. Like, holy crap. Where the mystery takes a far darker turn, as we can hear the lady say her first discernible words. The video shows the woman begging the officers not to take her to the hospital, pleading as if her life depended on it, and it only gets stranger and even more tragic as she begins pleading with them not to take her baby. This may seem like a random one-off comment, until you realize that the object in her hand had seemingly changed. Even though the footage is pretty hard to decipher, it seems as though that bloody fanny pack that she had been holding in the original clip was no longer in her possession, and instead, she appears to be holding something entirely different. This object has been the source of great speculation, as the blurry uh. video makes it hard to definitively identify, though some, including myself, seem to think that it closely resembles a baby, and more specifically, the head of a baby. Either that or the doll, a doll's head. It's either that or it was like, I don't know, I almost kind of wonder, my, I don't even want to talk about it, man. My head paints like fucked up horror images. Same, like stuff same. Stuff that could have happened. And like, I don't want to think that like she killed a baby or anything, but I'm almost wondering if like she had like a stillbirth. And, like, it sort of drove her insane, and that then she was wandering around, you know, with her stillborn baby, like... Yeah. Like, just losing her mind, essentially, you know? I, I don't know, that's one of those stories that my brain just kind of paints the blanks in for, but who knows, man, this is very odd. This was the last clip we would receive from the incident, leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions and overwhelming concern for the woman shown in the clips. Though despite the popularity of this case and all the questions put forth, the answers never came. 
bizarrely, no official statement. It's one of the things I was these... thinking when she first walked out and stuff. Is it almost looked like she was holding like crazy like a baby or like uh, at first I was like, is she holding her own intestines in her hand or something like that? You know? Yeah. It was a fanny pack, and it kind of went back away. But now with the recontext, I'm like, uh, I don't know. Like, what? What is going on? Seattle PD, despite their officers being shown in this viral video. And on top of this, despite the story being picked up by a few news stations, no official conclusion or clarification would be brought forward. And given the lack of context and the lack of closure, this internet mystery was born, and the theories would quickly spread like wildfire. Right out of the gate, many users would be quick to call this story a fake, believing that this was nothing more than a setup, mainly due to the lack of reporting and also because of the woman's appearance, as given how unnatural she looked, many believe that she was simply wearing a heavy amount of makeup, with some calling her appearance and demeanor almost cartoonish. Plus, if we're being honest, TikTok is completely filled with fabricated stories just like this, leaving many mm -hmm. set on this whole situation being fake. However, this actually isn't the case. One of the few updates we've gotten in this case came from the discovery of official police dispatch radio, which was found publicly available on a site known as Broadcastify. There, users would find audio from May 5th in the Seattle area that seemed to depict this exact incident, with the audio being just as chilling as the videos themselves. 300816 Avenue West. There's a female walking eastbound on West Barrett Street that has blood running down her face and leg. She's also yelling and limping. She's described as a white female, 20 to 30, 55 to 57, thin build, with a shaved head and brown patches of hair wearing a gray t-shirt, blue jeans, and one white shoe. 15th and West Armour Street on the uh, west side, just north of. Send an uh, AMR for an ITA. The recording seems like an exact match to these yep. videos, from the way the subject is Don't described that all the way else. to that unmistakable screaming in the background. And this is undoubtedly from the Seattle PD, it came straight from their official police line, meaning that whatever this incident truly was... One of the things was, about it is, like, if it was a medical situation she wasn't arrested, like, I feel like, for the most part, she kind of has a right to her privacy. Yeah. Like, whatever happens, like, is really, to be honest, none of anyone's business, probably. I agree. Like, if no crime was committed, it's really none of anyone's business. So I kind of would prefer it to remain unsolved if that was the case, you know? Same. Very much the same. response to it was very real. This note also seems to disprove a long-standing theory that the clips were actually from the set of a movie being filmed in the area, as coincidentally, during this exact time period, there was a major film being produced in Seattle called Kimmy. On Monday, film crews were spotted in Westlake Center shooting a new HBO movie called Kimmy. Which many had speculated that this was some kind of PR stunt from the project. But given the fact that this was a real police response, and that the film has actually since come out, with there being no mention of any zombies or any similar incidences within it, this is yet another debunked theory. Yeah. And while on the subject of debunked so theories, like, uh, I want to briefly not mention- gonna, I mean, people are going to get in trouble when you're going to hear about it if a PR event causes wasting police resources and such, you know? Yes in what, at one point, had actually become the most popular theory surrounding this case, which is honestly incredibly offensive. And that is the claim that this woman was Marilyn Stanley, a woman who was brutally attacked by her ex-boyfriend and his dog, leading to devastating injuries. And because of her disfigurement, people pointed to her being the Seattle zombie woman, believing that this footage was taken just moments after her assault, However, despite so many people reporting this, it is incredibly easy to disprove, as the Marilyn Stanley attack took place in Kentucky, not Seattle. Yeah, then take five seconds and like make sure your theories line up before you start putting them out there, guys. What the hell? People are just so quick to just be like, hey, ah, there, solved it, there. Don't ask any questions, I solved it. 
None of these facts add up. It's like, nope, solved it, solved it. Shut up, shut up. I win. <laughs> I win the internet for the day. That's literally all it is. It's you a rat race. The, yeah, I did it. Moment. Like, and then I was like, wait a second. This took place in Kentucky. Then why is she in Seattle? <laughs> and the assault happened all the way back in 2015, a full year before TikTok was even created, and a full six years before this video was filmed. This theory was never a possibility, and one Google search would have shown that. But unfortunately, that didn't stop the speculation. People are too lazy to Google and search, man. Yeah. Landish theories continued from there. People ask me questions all the time off. that I'm like... Google says this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, I'm not Google, but I'll fucking Google it for you, I guess the deep end, believing that this woman truly was a real life zombie. The theory is obviously very ridiculous, but it was made a bit more intriguing as around the same time, there were reportedly similar occurrences emerging throughout the world of individuals looking and behaving in a similar manner. Nothing at all creepy about that. Dude, that is so fucking creepy. That looked more alien than more personal. Curious, this video soon began being removed and censored from both TikTok and YouTube, with only a few versions being left throughout the web. And adding this with the fact that there was no media coverage following this event and no police statements made to the public, despite the situation's virality, it left many convinced that this was some form of a greater cover-up. But ultimately, it's not hard to tell that this theory was just fear-mongering. And at the end of the day, it's a theory that is highly unrealistic, though interesting to speculate. More logically, it's been theorized that this lady had been in some sort of car accident as she was shown walking alongside a fairly busy road and appeared to almost be in shock, with her potentially having lost her baby in the wreck, adding to the trauma of the moment. But it seems completely unrealistic that if a child had passed away, there would have been no reports about it. I mean, surely this would have brought at least local media coverage, and it definitely would have been mentioned in the police blotter, which it yeah. wasn't. And given that no mention of a child was made on the official police recording at the scene, this idea, thankfully, has been ruled out, meaning that this object was likely something entirely different. Though even with this, it still leaves the car accident theory as a very real possibility, as it could explain why she was acting this way, along with her apparent injuries. Along with this possible explanation, there was another theory that I initially thought to be the most plausible, with that being that this was all the result of drugs and or severe mental illness, which would not only explain her behavior, but also the lack of official reporting. Mm. As a woman on drugs causing a scene is nothing all that noteworthy, especially in a major city. And as for her appearance, well, drugs can literally turn people into shells of themselves and make them completely unrecognizable. And her ragged and torn clothing could just be the result of potential homelessness, a fate that sadly befalls far too many people in our society who deal with these very struggles. Though with all this being said, landing on one definitive conclusion was unfortunately impossible based off the limited information available. And despite there being plausible theories put forth, a true answer seemed further away than ever, especially as the months began to pass. But even though the situation began to seem hopeless, a break would soon emerge out of nowhere in the form of police body cam footage that would blow this case wide open. Whoa. <laughs> On March 9th, 2022, a YouTube account by the name of Rebecca MS would upload a video revealing her findings into the Seattle zombie woman mystery. As even though the world had seemingly forgotten about this bizarre case, Rebecca had taken it upon herself to find its true conclusion, which led her all the way to the discovery of this footage. Hey, ma'am. Hey, it's okay. You want to tell us what's going on? Is that, is that real blood or fake blood? That almost looks like fake blood. I don't think 
Sure is a makeup, okay. It's like, it's like, almost like, like Halloween, like zombie makeup. The video shows the Seattle zombie woman incident from the perspective of the police on scene. And although this further proves that the response to this incident was in fact real, it also proves that the incident itself was not. As Ooh. the first responders began to quickly realize that this lady wasn't even injured and she was instead wearing heavy theatrical makeup with fake blood, leaving the officers and bystanders just as confused as the rest of us. And the biggest revelation to come of all this was the discovery of this individual's true identity, with her real name being Kimberly Kasai, a revelation that would in turn lead to the discovery of her social media profiles and ultimately the truth behind this internet mystery. Not long after the incident occurred, Kimberly would post this picture in full makeup, matching identically to the Seattle zombie woman, along with the caption, I am not your lab rat. She would then make a few other posts on Facebook, which revealed that she had carried out this whole stunt as a way to voice her opinions on certain political topics, which I unfortunately can't go more into here. But in the end, despite the police and paramedic presence being very real, this woman, the Seattle zombie woman, was simply acting mm. this is truly one of these strange so basically cases she did seen. waste police resources on a stupid stunt in a long time since its theories were so dark and so disturbing yet in reality this was nothing more than a bizarre publicity stunt and in the end it's obviously a good thing that none of these theories were true and that no one was injured as a result yeah making this one of the very few internet mysteries that actually arrived at a definitive and i guess somewhat satisfying conclusion i mean not entirely satisfying it's kind of annoying <laughs> yeah, because she wasted everyone's time. Yeah. Look, I get doing a publicity I mean, she's stunt. She's trying to provoke thought, but she provoked a lot of thoughts in me that were nothing to do with what she was trying to provoke at all. Yeah. It's like, she clearly has some strange ideas on how to do things. She needs help, dude. Jesus Christ. I want to give a huge shout out to my God tier patron members Alexander Duran, America's Grumpy Uncle, Bazoo42, Biznacker, Bray, Karen S, Charles Robel, Daniel Binge, Donovan Aaron, Emmanuel Kadena, G, Game Gamer, Jake Parsons, JB Funk, J Money, John Stuart Muller, Catherine Ross, Lacey, Larry Matingley, Mark PH, Max, My Crafty Ways, Nathan Backus, Phoenix Morgan, Sam Lutfi, Seralis Scar77, Skelly, Sub to Micro O, Unblended Korchnoi, William Berg, Zinsu Zensai, and Trucky Doggo. It's almost like what happens with the alien lore. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think the whole mystery would have been <coughs> better if we didn't hear the end of it. <laughs> it solved, know what I mean? Yeah. It's like the ending is like much less interesting than all of the theories that initially evokes in your mind. Jesus, Sage. So in the end, it's just a theater student. Like, with way too much time on their hands. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this whole deal just... Wow. Wow, dude. <laughs> you... You crazy, crazy woman. It's like, I want to show the world I'm sick of their bullshit. It's like, proceeds to commit bullshit. Okay. Congratulations, you played yourself. <laughs> oh my god. So, yeah, that was the mystery of the Seattle zombie woman. No longer an internet mystery, but instead now, and I hope eventually becomes a laughing stock. Really do. I really hope that people will look back on this story and will laugh their asses off. And how stupid this woman is. I would say a lot of people that know of her 
probably we're going to have trouble taking her seriously about much of anything after that. Yeah, no doubt. Jesus. So, anyway, that was Nick Crowley. Good first introduction. I mean, I'm glad that we were able to to react to him. And uh, Oh, he's got, in my opinion, really good editing formatting and stuff he's a good narrator no doubt dude even though at first i was like this cadence reminds me of chills as it went through the video like it didn't give me anywhere near the same vibe as chills it was, no this this was very much yeah, it was its own thing it was better yes a lot, you know so nick crowley well done well done i like it must applaud I'd be willing to watch more oh absolutely so let us know which nick crowley videos you all want us to watch next feel free to let us know you can, you can voice it in the comment section, but in order to really make us watch it, you'll have to go to our Discord and like hit up our request there. But, all right. There's several fans in the Discord already that are level 10, so if you just talk to them in general chat and just be like, hey, why don't you request this one, then I'm sure some of them would do you a favor. Because you have to be level 10 in the Discord. It's a bot thing. We can't really track it back anymore. It's kind of stuck there. Yeah. Um... And, uh, yeah, give him a subscribe, guys. Much yeah. like how Check I'm going to be giving him if you haven't yet. a subscribe. Check it out. If you got to the end of the video and you haven't been to over to his channel, what are you doing? Go over there right now. Watch, yes. Watch Click his name right down there. Should be right below Nick's feet. So, anyway. This Nick, not that Nick. D yeah. Too many my, Nicks. My name doesn't have a K on it. Too many, too many Nicks. And mine's just N-I-C. Yeah. That's how you tell all right, so that's going to do it, everyone. Take care. Till next time, I'm Nate. I'm Nick. Take care. Everybody.